let's now look at yet another predictive tool, um, which is the coronary artery calcium score. So um, maybe tell folks what, what a CAC is. Uh, I suspect a number of people listening to this will have had it, but enough will not have, so it's worth explaining what the test is. Coronary calcium is a, uh, an important step forward in cardiovascular imaging. And it's a process where you can accurately and, and pretty safely determine using x-ray techniques whether there's calcium bone in the coronary arteries. And calcification is part is a feature of advanced atherosclerosis. And so there are there's very strong evidence that people who have coronary calcification are at higher risk uh, of a heart attack or stroke than people who do not have coronary calcification. And, and that's, a, that's an important piece of information. But there's several uh, facts you also have to appreciate. First, the, the frequency of a positive coronary calcium goes up as we age. And so does the risk of disease. <laughs> so by the time a man is 60, all American men are at high risk, according to your current guidelines. Women are five to 10 years later. So, at the point where the test is most commonly positive, I don't even need it. Because that person, we were talking a while back about the natural history and stary and stuff. That stuff is for real, okay? Um, our arteries in uh, the majority of us have become substantially transformed in bad ways by the time we're 60. Now, in people who are younger than 60, can this give you extra information if you're on the cusp of saying, should you be treated or not? And I think the answer is yes. If you or the patient says, I want more information, I'm not convinced that I personally are in a situation where I should be taking medications, and you have a positive coronary calcium, I think that can be extremely helpful. It's, the, it's, it's what's taken as the corollary, that if your coronary calcium is negative, you're okay. And that's the problem. For me, from my knowledge and interpretation of literature, and the pathological studies, Coronary calcification is a advanced disease, means advanced disease is present. When people have a heart attack, they don't just have one little area of their arteries that are abnormal. That's the area where the plaque broke, where the endothelium eroded. But the, the artery is diseased. And, and there, there's a chance of an event a centimeter down or a centimeter closer. So if somebody has a high ApoB, the fact that their coronary calcium is negative doesn't mean they don't have a lot of disease and that the disease isn't developing at a rapid rate. It could well be there. So there's an argument saying, well, if your coronary calcium is negative, nothing's going to happen to you in the next five or 10 years. And uh, maybe, but the disease is going to develop and we can't make the disease go away. We can modify the effects of the disease, modify the consequences. But when we talk about, I mean, LDL cholesterol and ApoB levels are now so low, that 
but, but you still have an artery that's destroyed, you're going to have a substantial number of events. And there's a paper, Don, John Wilkins and Don Lloyd Jones from uh, Northwestern, they have a paper in JAHA, and it's a, it's a terrible paper to read, but because it's so complicated, and I wish they hadn't presented it in as complex a form as they did. They're friends of mine, so I can criticize them. But within it are the observations that starting to treat waiting for a coronary calcium is a bad idea. So I'm a conservative physician. It may not be my politics, but as in that I want to protect patients, give them the option, because it's the patient's choice, of course it is. Give them the option to have the best outcome possible when it's they appear to be in danger. So I wouldn't use a negative coronary calcium to change my clinical decision when I have a high ApoB or another cause of vascular disease present. So I think it's a good test, but relatively limited utility for me. Yeah, I, I, the way I've sort of talked about it, maybe even on the podcast, but certainly the way I talk about it with patients every day, it would seem is, I, I describe it as a two by two matrix. Um, so we think about how this test is helpful in people who are young and people who are old. Now I usually use 50 as the cutoff. It sounds like you use 60 as the over under, but let's just say it's somewhere in that sixth decade. And then is it zero or is it non-zero? Um, and I, and I, I, I agree with what I'm hearing is your assessment, which is in the older patient, the positive score is not very informative. So when I have a 70 year old patient whose calcium score is 50, it's sort of like, so what? Like you're, you're normal. It, that doesn't tell me much. Um, and conversely, when I have, uh, an older patient whose score is zero and they're adamant about not getting treatment, it becomes an easier, um, decision to accept because you can say, well, gosh, you're pretty fortunate to be 73 years old. And despite having an ApoB of, you know, 140 milligrams per deciliter, your, 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 your calcium score is zero. There must be some other protective mechanisms in you. Yeah. Our, our, the, the bounds of our knowledge are really quite limited and yeah. it's important that we admit that to ourselves as, and, and to our patients as well. Uh, I, I look at it maybe a bit differently. I say, yes, I would say the same thing. And I would say, yeah, but even so. Well, yes, the, uh, to me, there's an asymmetry, which I want to come to in a moment. On the flip side of things, the young patient who has a positive calcium score, really, that's a four alarm fire, regardless no of the ApoB, right? Yeah. So if you're, yeah. if you're under 50 and you have a speck of calcium in your coronary arteries, even yeah. if it's a low enough speck that it would predict a 10 year risk of 4%, that's still utterly unacceptable. Oh, no, if, 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 it's, if it's positive, it's positive and it, it's going to, it's only going to go up. Exactly. You know and, and more to your point, it's what it says about the milieu of the entire system. So yeah. that might be the one area in the middle of your left anterior descending artery where you're at such an advanced stage that you've already laid calcium there. Um, but you know, it's sort of like looking at the concrete that's been poured over Chernobyl and trying to infer what's going on in the 10 miles around Chernobyl. It's, it's all yeah. bad. Yeah, that's correct. Where I find the most challenge is in the, the, the there's, there's the, there's the group think that says if a person's calcium score is zero, no treatment is needed. Um, and this kind of gets back to your, your paper from JAMA, I think 2018, maybe 2017, looking at the 30-year the risk, the causal model, which I want to come back to. You, you mentioned it very briefly at the outset, but it's so important that I want to now use this as a, 
as a jumping point to go to go there, which is you take that 45 year old person who you expect their calcium score to be zero. It is zero, but their ApoB is higher than it should be, or you would like it to be. That calcium score of zero hasn't really added much information to my decision making. No, because your time horizon is different, and and I and I think that that's what in those studies are, we we use twenty thirty years. Okay, I think the ten year. If you're forty five, you want to get to further than fifty five. Your your career, your children, your your uh, enjoyment of things. Surely you're not just planning to age 55. And you should be thinking, well, what am I going to be like at 65 or 75? That's reasonable. And it's also by taking it out to that, you can get to numbers that are really meaningful. When somebody's at a 30% chance, like one in three, that's a, that's a number most people can understand. And it starts to become a truly individually meaningful, a meaningful number for an individual. When somebody's at 7.8% risk, I, you know, that's, that's, that's tough to absorb in, in, a, in, a, in any way that means something. So when you're in one of these higher risk groups, it doesn't mean you're doomed, but you're in company with a lot of folks who are. And, and we can say that absolutely accurately. And yes, it's limited. It may not be you. Make your bet.